Welcome to another episode of Tiny Nest. I'm Kiva. And I'm Jake. This series is following our tiny house project from the early stages through to completion and beyond. This episode shows the problem that we had with our door and how we replaced it. So first off, we recommend that you watch the video on how we installed this door. But basically what's happened is that both the door and the jam have taken on moisture and expanded, mostly in the corners where it can't be adjusted, and it's not operating properly anymore, so we need to replace it. Funny enough, the door is actually the first thing that we ordered for the tiny house because it would take several weeks to get here. We worked with the door guy to get all the details right about having it be an exterior grade outswing door with this fiberglass texture. Because it's an exterior door and it was coming straight from the door shop, we weren't in the mindset that it would be vulnerable to moisture. We did paint the entire surface of the door, including the top and the bottom, with a blue latex paint, but we weren't super meticulous about getting into all the little crevices or spots like behind the hinges or in where the hardware goes. So here's a clip of it operating perfectly right after we had installed and adjusted it, but within a week there was a fairly light sprinkling of rain but it was enough to get in there and start the swelling. And once it had started expanding, there was no way it's gonna to retract to its original size, so it's been wedged ever since. So here's a clip of it uh, shortly after we discovered the problem. And this is what it's like now, even without the hardware, it's quite tight and we're actually using the friction to keep it closed while we're transferring the hardware to the other uh, replacement door. We presented this problem to our door guy and he recognized that even with all the lengthy discussions we had while ordering the door, we were never provided with any directions on how to properly seal it. He was able to get us another door under warranty so we've incurred no loss because of this. So now that we've got the replacement, the first thing we did was separate the door from the jam by completely removing the hinges from both sides. We then examined the door closely and identified all the vulnerable spots. There was exposed particle board along the top, uh, wood exposed from chiseling behind the hinges, exposed wood in where the hardware goes, and along the bottom there was this very fibrous particle board that had a couple grooves uh, cut into it. So we sanded that down, and in fact sanded down all of the exposed wood that we found, and then applied an oil-based primer sealer to get the first layer of protection down. We identified that the trim around the glass was going to need some caulking and we started caulking by filling in those grooves along the bottom to get a nice surface to paint against as well as caulking all the seams along the sides of the door. The jam had many similar exposed spots which we sanded and primed the same way and we identified that the seam between the threshold and the framing of the jam would need caulking. After finishing this prep, we set about painting the door with the blue latex paint. We got three coats on both sides and something like five or six coats around the perimeter. Here's a few shots of how the bottom of the door turned out after being painted. When I went to put the deadbolt in, I realized that I was going to have to chisel out some material to get the plate to sit flush. And so after exposing some fresh wood, we primed that, let that sit, and then applied the latex paint with a tiny little brush to cover it all and then even went as far as putting a dab of paint in the pilot holes for the screws that would hold the plate in, just to be 100% certain there was no way water was going to get in that way. We also lined the holes for the cylinder portion of the mechanism with weather stripping, so that when it was tightened down it would make a bit of a gasket. To finish off the jam we painted all the vulnerable spots and we even took the weather stripping out to get a bit of paint in that channel and found that in the corners there was actually some pretty rough exposed spots we just rammed a brush in there to make sure that uh, had paint on it as well. The interior part of the threshold on the original jam was a grey plastic material but this new one had some pretty bare wood so we used some of the stain that we've been using on their exterior siding to give it a bit of a protective coating. And then we went ahead and put caulking in the seam pretty much anywhere that that metal exterior portion of the threshold made contact with any wood. Our first door uh, was entirely beige, including this trim around the window, so we didn't even think twice about it, we just painted the whole door blue. But our replacement door came with a white trim, and there was a little sticky note saying that it was made out of a plastic that was weather resistant, didn't need to be painted, and wouldn't discolor. So we decided to just leave it white because it matches the rest of the trim on the house. 
So we just masked off the trim while painting, and when the painting was all done, we put down a bead of caulking to seal the seam between the trim and the door, and doing it this way and using a clear caulking has left a hard edge between the blue and the white, so it looks pretty sharp. And then we also used the same caulking to seal the seam between the trim and the glass, and we did that caulking on both sides. So we got the door back in the jam, and what we did there was just lay the door down uh, with the outside face facing down and prop it up on some boxes. And then we could manipulate the jam, which is much lighter, into position and line it up with the hinges and get that on. Then we just closed the jam over the door until we got it latched. And it's a bit out of square, but we're going to need to get it into position before we can adjust that. So now we're ready to take out the old door. You remember from when we installed this door that we used this blue skin to cover the gap between uh, the jam and the framing. And this is stuck down, there's no way we're going to be able to peel this off, so we're just going to slice in where that gap is to separate the, the door from where it's stuck there. Okay, we've got that all sliced and now we just need to go around and remove the screws that uh, are holding the jam in place and then we're going to tip it into the house and then the only uh, unknown here is how well the caulking has set on the bottom. We're hoping that it doesn't tear all the blue skin off or cause some big mess. So we'll see how that turns out. So it was kind of a mess on the bottom when we got the door out. Uh, a bunch of the caulking on the pan had not set, so it was all messy. But that was actually good in a way because it made it easy for the door to come out. But on the, the sides here where we put caulking up, um, that had set quite well. So as the door was, we were levering it out, it just twisted and tore a bunch of the house wrap and the blue skin and everything. So I'm just cutting all that messed up stuff out of the way and ripping this off. And we're gonna put a new, um, pan down and make sure that everything's sealed here before we put the new door on. We were worried that uh, the blue skin would have to come off and that it would be really hard to get off, but I'm finding that uh, it will, with a little uh, massaging, it's coming off pretty well. And I'll probably give it a light sand here just to get some fresh uh, wood for the next stuff to stick down on. We got the door in relatively easily, but it took just as much, if not more, tweaking to get it working properly. But we did get it operating smoothly, and all the screws that we used to secure and adjust the jam we sunk in and covered with wood filler and then painted over for protection. And we'll probably go over it again later to touch it up and make it look nice. And as you can see, we've got the trim on, and this is how we went about doing that. All right, we're getting the trim up around the door, and before I put this piece on, I'm gonna lay a bead down against the jam behind the strike plate here, and you'll see why and how it all comes together once it's up. We pre-drilled and reamed out the holes uh, for the screws so that the screw head sucks the piece in, just like we did on all the other trim. So we already had the strike plate on and you can see that if I were to try to get in behind the strike plate with the uh, gun, it would be hard to get a nice bead in there and uh, feel confident that it sealed the seam. So I just put the bead down ahead of time so that it's uh, squished nicely and made contact between the jam and the trim. And now we can put a bead uh, along the rest of it and just meet up with it uh, to seal it from top to bottom. I also was doing that to show you uh, an example of how we went about getting in behind the hinges. Obviously we could have taken the strike plate off, but we can't take these hinges off once it's all uh, put together like this. So we laid a bead down against the jam just like I showed you over there uh, behind each of the hinges. And then when we put the trim on, it squished it. And then we put the final bead to meet up 
with uh, where we had put the bead underneath, right in the corner with the gun, and got it sealed from top to bottom. We thoroughly sealed all around the trim. We got a bead around the inside perimeter, including along the top, and we filled the gap between the threshold and the trim along the bottom, making sure to also get underneath and meet up with the caulking we had already put on the jam. We also put an extra bead on the bottom, underneath the threshold, as well as a bead around the entire outside perimeter of the trim, including along the top. We realized that since the hardware holes were drilled all the way through, that they could be an entry point for moisture, so we filled them in between the jam and the framing, making sure that it wouldn't interfere with the mechanisms. And here is a shot of it all done, with the rain screen installed and ready for siding. So all the physical work is done, we might just have to touch up some paint later, but something across our minds was that the gap between the door and the jam is open to the exterior because it's an outswing. The weather stripping's on the other side so that when the door closes it makes contact with it in there. So this is wide open, and even though we're planning on making some kind of canopy uh, overhang, windy rain could get against here and get in there. So we thought of ways to seal that off. And it's funny because we forgot to take a clip of the door operating really nicely right after we'd finished it. And it's tight right now, but it's because it's rubbing against weather stripping, and I'll show you what we got going on in here. On the hinge side, it was easy because this edge of the door basically just swings and closes against this part of the jam. So we use some of that foam weather stripping uh, close to the exterior edge so that when it's closed, there's a seal here and water is not getting all in, in behind here and getting on the hinge and whatnot. On the other side though, we can't use that foam stuff because the door actually needs to swing past it and there's way too much traction, it would just rip it apart. So I found this sticky back sort of bristly stuff and even though it's quite small, uh, the friction added up along the whole length of the door made it so tight that we could hardly even close the door. So we gave it a bit of a haircut to trim it down and try to reduce the friction. And we've got it to a point now where it's usable. Um, it's still pretty tight, so we're not sure if we're gonna keep it permanently. Um, maybe we can keep uh, tweaking it and get it a bit better. But for now, it's doing the job that we uh, set out to do. We're pretty pumped to be completely done with the door. It was an unexpected delay. But as you can see, we're plowing ahead with the siding and we hope to be done the exterior soon. Two things worth mentioning about our experience are, uh, one, the jam is still just barely big enough for the door to operate properly. We actually asked for an extra eighth of an inch in width on the replacement jam and we didn't get it because of a mix up and by that time we had just dealt so much with getting the new door that we just accepted the regular size jam and made it work. But uh, it's something worth considering and of course now with that weather stripping we're realizing that it really would have been nice to have that little bit of extra width to work with. Um, the other thing being the caulking, as you saw uh, when we pulled out the old door, all that unset caulking in there. And this is something we also learned when we were doing the siding, as you'll see when we get to that video. Uh, we started with a water-based caulking, which was fine initially when we were working with it in the summer. Uh, but as soon as the weather started getting a bit colder and damper, that stuff just would not cure. Uh, and we actually had it rinsing away in rain. So we've switched to a different brand that's like an all-weather type stuff and it's much thicker and it just works way better and that's what we used everywhere on the door uh, under the paint, it's paintable. And so it's just, that's another thing worth considering is that we never thought to research different types of caulking, we didn't realize that we could get ourselves into trouble with that. Um, so it's just a, uh, a, another point I wanted to make. If you want to see some of our previous videos, click on the preview tiles and subscribe if you want to follow our progress. You can also visit our website here.